In the decade following World War II, tensions between the USSR and the rest of the world increased. Things only got worse when the Soviet Union detonated its first atomic bomb in 1949 and hydrogen bomb in 1953. The reason we went to space uh, is deny air access. You know, we want to understand what was going on deep within, uh, deep within Russia or any of our other potential adversaries. And so, on December 8, 1957, the U.S. put plans into action to develop the world's first high-resolution film surveillance system from space, gathering imagery intelligence, or IMINT, with a satellite later known as Corona. I believe IMINT and the whole imagery idea started way back. We would point to Corona as the first GEOINT mission with all of the film. Uh, in fact, we recognized the Corona mission uh, with our GEOINT coin that we give out that has a piece of the Corona film in it. The imagery revolution, IMINT from space, had begun. And we learned a lot of stuff by some of those first flights. Now, the Russians weren't as far as long as we thought in many cases, right? Uh, we didn't know that until we got some of the initial uh, imagery from our systems. IMINT from space had proved its value, and it wasn't long until it proved critical in a major world crisis. In one giant step, Russia is giving Cuba an offensive nuclear capability that can strike at the heart of the United States. However, even though the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962 escalated dangerously, the U.S. knew they had the stronger hand. Corona's imminent had revealed a huge American missile advantage, by some estimates as much as 14 to 1 in America's favor. Soon, the Soviets backed down. Aerial reconnaissance, which confirmed the original missile bomber threat, now shows the weapons being removed and crated for return to the Soviet Union. Improved resolution and coverage from new satellites like Gambit and Hexagon made IMINT ever more vital. Just every war that uh, we've been uh, involved in, uh, IMINT and uh, our NRO assets have been vital in terms of uh, the intelligence we pr provide to our policymakers, but the protection of our troops. But also, you know, earthquakes, tsunamis, forest fires. I mean, we support all those. And the desire to enhance overhead surveillance led to a historic NRO experiment, radar on orbit. The first image I ever saw of space radar was from a program called Quill back in the 60s. And if you looked at it, you couldn't tell what it was, <laughs> but it was a radar image. The NRO continued to pursue space radar, but it was an uphill climb. Radar was, it was a tough go in the beginning. People called it blobology. Uh, a lot of it is because people didn't understand it. The first person I went to hunt down was that engineer, Randy Blystone, who and said, hey, what does this system do? And you know, basically the first thing I was told is, see through clouds. You can see at night things that the electrical optical system in the 70s, early 80s could not do. And it took a number of years in refinements and how to better process it to really show its, its niche. I think there's been a recognition from the user community, particularly the DOD, that radar is the one phenomenology that we must count on. So when you have to have something, it's radar. The radar image today, compared to what I saw the first time, would I'm blown away by it. For the NRO's first decades, activities were divided up based on which organization had jurisdiction. The way that NRO was, was originally organized, Program A was the Air Force, Program B was Central Intelligence Agency, Program C was the Navy. But in 1992, the NRO decided to do away with programs A through C and create functional directorates. See, when they consolidated uh, A, B, and C, and we became M, N, C, G, N, C, O, M, that was a good thing. It was the birth of the IMIN Directorate. By IMIN coming along, it kind of consolidated all of that imagery idea, and that really, I think, put an emphasis on IMIN as a directorate, as a uh, INT intelligence capability. We really need to the NRO to come together, and then this facility, moving the programs together in one location where we could actually work together. Moving from a covert to a publicly acknowledged organization in 1992 and moving into a new central NRO headquarters in 1996 were also big changes. 
The idea of driving in every day to an open NRO facility, they had the National Reconnaissance Office written at the gate. You're almost like you thought you were committing a security violation driving into the facility. The NRO had come a long way since the days of Corona. Corona explored and conquered the unknowns of space reconnaissance, and it opened the way for more sophisticated follow-on systems. The most significant technological advance that followed was electronic transmission of imagery. Not only was it our sensors and our collection, but largely what we did on the ground. We went from film-based production at that ground station to digitization of what we do in terms of generating images and then disseminating that information to the community at large. Shorter timelines were only one of the digital advantages. Moving into the digital world, you can change the grayscale of, of the imagery and highlight certain things, do a lot of manipulation. You can do a tremendous amount with that. In fact, so many extra capabilities were being added to Imint that in 2017, it became time to change the name from Imint to GeoInt. So um, I'm to blame for that name change. The rationale for, for the change really was we had moved well beyond providing images from space to not only providing images, but information to describe, to assess, to discern objects, to identify activity. Changing the name, that was tough for an old timer like me, but you know what, it, it makes sense. In the end, it's the fusion of things, right? We've incorporated radar and we've incorporated EO. I think the name was really a reflection of the evolution of GeoInt from providing just pure imagery to providing smart data. With so many versatile capabilities in its constellations, it's small wonder that GeoInt has played a major role in so many world events. I think the most impressive would have been the takedown of Osama bin Laden. Just the importance of, of that event to our nation, and bringing closure, if you will, to uh, that chapter of the U.S. history. My whole career I was involved in Desert Storm, and I thought what we did there was fantastic. But uh, and the most impressive thing I've seen is what we've done to support Ukraine. Whether it's like a Ukraine or Middle East or natural disasters like earthquakes, GeoInt plays a critical role in all those. And GeoInt has changed the world dramatically in little known ways. The work we did on IDEX back in the uh, early 80s create the standard for high definition television, which you live with today. GeoInt remains the standard bearer for the intelligence needs of today and stands ready for the challenges of tomorrow. The future of GEO, and I think, is very bright. There's nothing that the NRO, the technical people, the security people within GEO can't overcome. When I started, there was this thing called carbon paper. So moving into the digital world, love it. The future of GEO, I think, is 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 a feature of the NRO, or matter of fact, it's a feature of the intelligence community, and it's, it's multi-infusion. There's that saying, adapt and evolve or go extinct, right? And I think we've done a very good job of adapting and evolving. Now, we couldn't have done it if some of the commercial market hadn't done what it was doing. And beyond commercial collection is commercial space, commercial launch. With that opening up, larger constellations, greater access, mean time to access, uh, timelines are down, and uh, now it's more data. SpaceX, Blue Origin, all of them, the data that they are producing will absolutely save lives. It's just amazing what we accomplish here. I'm just tickled to death to be a small part of, of what these engineers uh, do. We've come a long way and um, I do believe there's much further to go.